Now I know for some, it just isn't Christmas until they see Hans Gruber fall from the top of the Nakatomi Tower. But for my money, it's just not Christmas until I see Craig Bierko fall onto an explosive chemical tanker seconds before it blows up the U.S.-Canadian border. Christmas time is finally here, and I know that there are a lot of folks that probably have a few films that they like to watch around this time. Stuff like Miracle on 34th Street, It's a Wonderful Life, A Christmas Story. But if you're an action movie fan, you've probably got movies like Die Hard and Lethal Weapon in your playlist as well. Now, no disrespect to John McClane, but there are definitely a few underrated gems that I feel have gone overlooked. And I have to say, if you haven't already, why are you not checking out Reindeer Games with Ben Affleck and Charlize Theron? In all seriousness, if there is a Christmas action movie that I'm partial to, it has got to be this little gem from 1996 starring Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson. I'm, of course, talking about The Long Kiss Goodnight, and it definitely warms my heart to see more people are actually talking about this film this year in particular. So it feels like if you haven't gotten on the train already, let me offer you a ticket right now. And make no mistake, if you have not seen this movie yet, you are missing out. Because for as much as we like to think that Matt Damon popularized Amnesiac Spies in the early aughts with the board identity, we had Gina Davis doing it and arguably being cooler about it in The Longest Good Night a whole six years earlier. Yes, and I know that there was a adaptation of the Bourne Identity in the 1980s, but don't nobody remember that shit. And The Long Kiss Goodnight would prove so influential that a young female rapper would adopt the name of Gina Davis's character as her own for her professional career as Charlie Baltimore. So take that, Richard Chamberlain. Living a fairly happy and normal life for the past eight years with no memory of her time beforehand, Samantha Kane is shocked to discover that she actually used to be a ruthless government assassin. And when enemies from her past come a-knockin', it's gonna be up to her and a down-and-out private detective to figure out what their new plot is and get back to her family in time for Christmas. Now, it's no surprise that there are still a lot of people who probably don't even know about this film, given the fact that it had the unfortunate reputation of coming out the year after the previous collaboration between June Davis and her then-husband and director, Renny Harlan, Cutthroat Island, managed to go ridiculously over budget, get disastrous reviews, and ultimately bankrupt the studio that put it out. Even if New Line Cinema had marketed The Long Kiss Goodnight as a film written by the same writer as Lethal Weapon, it still probably wouldn't have done much to boost the critical or commercial success of the film overall. But the film has definitely developed a cult following over the past 25 years, and it's just great to see more people discovering it because it is just a fun, gritty, action-packed spy thriller that's very funny, doesn't take itself seriously, even though there's a lot of it that they're playing straight. Now, a lot of this is due to the chemistry between Gina Davis and Samuel L. Jackson, but I swear to God, Gina Davis is just taking this role and running with it. You see that change between her as Samantha Kane and her as Charlie Baltimore, and it is like night and day. Now, Gina Davis had always been like a sexy tall glass of water, but you rarely saw her in roles where she's really leaning into the sexiness. And here you have her playing Charlie Baltimore, and it is just absolutely amazing because once she gets her full memory back and that whole personality ch changes, you just see this whole different character. She's busting caps and fools left and right, and you just think to yourself, oh my god, I'm kind of terrified but also a little bit aroused. And I will say this, as far as her taking on Shane Black's dialogue, you kind of get the sense that she is doing it better than most men in films written or directed by Shane Black. So you definitely kind of have to give her credit for that because personally, I think this is one of her best roles. Granted, 
One of my favorite exchanges of dialogue in The Long Kiss Goodnight would probably be Think Peace to Death by a handful of feminist online media publications. Good evening, pretty lady. How about some company? No thanks, I'm saving myself till I get raped. Then we also have Samuel L. Jackson, who at this point had already completed a hat trick of being paired in films with white people in crazy situations, with this The Long Kiss Goodnight being preceded by his turn in Die Hard with a Vengeance in 1995, Pulp Fiction in 94, and the lesser talked about Amos and Andrew with Nicolas Cage in 1993. But best believe there is nothing more hilarious than his introduction in The Long Kiss Goodnight as Mitch Hennessy, a private detective who is pretending to be a police officer to extort money from a John who he has caught with his partner played by a pre-Providence Melina Catacarides. It's no wonder Samuel L. Jackson actually cites this as one of, if not his favorite role that he's done as an actor. And props to the test screening audience for this film because if not for them, we would have seen a version of The Long Kiss Goodnight where Mitch Hennessy dies at the end. And trust me, nobody would have wanted that. We've also got Craig Bierko in there as Timothy, one of the main villains in the film. And I swear to you, this character has to be one of the top tier 90s action movie villains. And that's saying something when you consider that the following year, Con Air would be released, which would have a literal murderer's row of top tier 90s action movie villains. But this man just loves being evil and hates being interrupted when he's being evil. It's kind of crazy. And of course, this is Craig Bierko in the 90s we're talking about. This, this is a very pretty man, and you're just kind of looking at him, and you almost don't fault him for being so despicable. You know, like you look into those eyes, you see that smile, and you're just thinking to yourself, damn, you are really evil, but you're also really charming. I, I'm, I'm forgetting my words, and what were we even talking about again? And just as an action film, this is great in terms of just how all of the action is escalating. Because even before you get into the main meat of the story, you have this great scene where Samantha is driving someone home from a Christmas party. They get into a car accident. She's thrown out of the car and into a snowbank, sees that she's hit a deer, and the deer is in agony and she just decides to snap its neck to put it out of its misery. You have her, you know, chopping up vegetables with her daughter and husband in the kitchen and she thinks to herself, maybe I was a chef because she's got killer knife skills. And then you get to the point in the film where her old enemies are realizing that she's still alive and tracking her down. And from that point on, where you just hit the ground running because she has to let her instincts kick in to defend her husband and daughter. And from that point on, once her and Hennessy team up, they're trying to get to the bottom of who she used to be. And it leads to one of the craziest shootout scenes in an action movie in the 90s. A lot of collateral damage, explosions, um, a great stunt that it looks like Gina Davis and Samuel Jackson performed part of, where they're descending out of a third story window into a frozen river, and just it just keeps escalating from there. And it's just a fun film. You know, there's that brutality to it. There's a little bit of heart to it. There's a lot of humor as well. And you're just on for that ride for as long as it is. Bob line, if you're looking for a new film to add to your Christmas movie viewing playlist, I can't think of a better one than The Long Kiss Goodnight. Like, if you like spy thrillers, if you like action movies, if you like comedy in your action movies, I think this is something that's checking all of those boxes. You've got great performances, you've got some fun stunts in there, you've got that brutality with the violence, and 
All of it is wrapped up with a nice Christmas bow. And honestly, what more could you ask for? You can barely find it on streaming outside of paying for it on Amazon last year, but now it's actually available on Prime, it's available on Hulu, it's available on a bunch of other streaming services for free. So take this opportunity and check out this film if you haven't already. Hey guys, thanks for watching as always. If you've got your own thoughts or opinions on The Long Kiss Goodnight, go ahead and leave a comment in the section below. Don't forget to hit the like button, hit the notification bell, share this video with your friends and family, and if you'd like to keep up to date on more at random videos, you can click the subscribe button right over here.